Shelly Luther will spend the next week in jail. Now the judge. In one salon owner in North Texas. Well, she learned that the hard way. And a hair salon owner who had also opened up her store has been jailed. Yes. Luther tore up the citation to the cheer of the crowd. But in Dallas, salon, salon owner Shelly Luther faced seven days in jail for... So your client is in jail right now? But yesterday, a woman by the name, and I want you to remember this name, a woman by the name of Shelly Luther in Texas. Support. We don't support the random jailing of, for example, the woman who's now a household name, Shelly Luther. I thought it was terrible. I thought he was a terrible judge. The, the prisoner would like to speak a word. You need to apologize. What were you thinking when he said he, you need to apologize to the politicians? I was like, what? So, sir, if you think the law is more important than kids getting fed, then please go ahead with your decision, but I am not going to shut the salon. They're putting this woman in jail because she's trying to feed her kids. The whole thing is screwed up. Well, I'm, I'm proud to stand with Shelly Luther, and I'll tell you what happened to her was wrong. Yeah. 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 I'm not anyone special. I just know that I have rights. You have rights to feed your children and make income. Right. And anyone that wants to take away those rights is wrong. We only had people in Washington, D.C. who had half the guts of this patriot play Shelley Luther. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Courage to Stand. I'm Shelley Luther. And I'm so glad that you guys are tuning in. And I'm so happy that you guys are going to CouragedToStand.com and joining our email link. Um, we had the superintendent of Peaster ISD on a couple weeks ago that required no masks when the students came back to school. And we got so much positive feedback. I had to tell you guys about a story. I had several people write to me, email me, message me, and say that they wanted to send a letter to their superintendent to the principal or even to the, the school's teacher and say, stop masking our kids. It's not right. And we had a lot of people go ahead and press send on those letters because of our show. And that's what we're all about here is putting our courage into action. We have a walking hero right here with us on the guest today. Please welcome Yaku Boyens. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for the show. No hero, but just glad to be here. And, and thank you for your courage and for standing up for truth and giving others the courage to stand up for truth. You know, sometimes people, Shelly, they just, they need it. People are sheep. They follow. Yeah. And so sometimes they just need leadership to show that it's possible and that they'll survive the mm -hmm. onslaught that come from the opposition mm -hmm. uh, because it's worth it. It is absolutely worth yeah. it. Um, I want to talk to you first about why you're here, why you have um, created this wave of action. You had something traumatic happen in your family? Yeah, when we, we're just gonna go for the jugular. When we talk about child sexual exploitation, let's start with this fact. We're the number one nation on earth. I'll say that again, the number one nation on earth commercializing sex with children. The United States of America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, the land of milk and honey that I immigrated to, that I love, I, and I bleed red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. But that's not a list we can be on, Shelley. We cannot. We cannot tolerate it. And this is generational now. This is not just the last, you know, four or five years. This is, this is administration after administration because it's a silent epidemic in our culture, the real epidemic in our culture that is so difficult to talk about. So for us, it's personal. In 1994, my sister, Ilonka, was a, a traffic victim. And so that, that lasted over a six year period. And that story really is an epic story that's Ilonka's to tell. And she does it so well in her book, Keeping Secrets. And I encourage mm -hmm. everybody to get that mm -hmm. book and understand what levels of trauma really is and what mm -hmm. sexual trauma really does to a human being. What does really she, happens? Does she describe how it, a lot of people want to know, how does that happen yeah. to like normal people? That's the biggest question yeah, that I Yeah, we'll get. describe it. We can just do it right here, right now in mm -hmm. our country. Look, the age of the internet has accelerated that, that exchange, right? Mm -hmm. So it used to be that part of town, the red light district, you used to have to have a pimp, which was the agent, the broker. Today, people self-exploit, 12-year-olds self-exploit on Facebook. 
yeah. on Instagram, on Some TikTok. Some of them don't even know that they they're doing it. They don't know that they're self-exploiting. Most of them don't. And so a predator's behavior is the following. It's no, it's akin to, I, I don't even know that's part of your story, but mm -hmm. your husband on your first date at some point reached out, tried to touch your hand, and he was reading your response. Mm -hmm. And if you kept your hand there, he could hold your hand. Right? right. If you pulled it away, it probably took him another week and a half before he tried again, or maybe he never tried again. And so it goes. A predator behaves the same online. Mm -hmm. They reach out to a child through a word, a word of encouragement, a compliment. Hey, uh, you got a pretty smile. Something as subtle as that. The response is what the predator is trained to measure. Mm -hmm. Right. They're experts. They run circles around the FBI when it comes to child profiling and how that child response tells the predator she's a target or she's not a target or she is a target. But I'm going to have to invest 10 months in this one. Wow. And it's and all based on our, social behavior. If we taught our kids this early and say 100%. this is exactly what they're trying to do. And if you do this, this will happen. Uh, look, Yes, we're involved in, in what's called awareness prevention. We're involved in case building and rescue. We're involved in retrieving children and placing them in safe homes, re-entry. We're involved in all of it, but all of it is triage. Unless we can mm -hmm. get in front of this thing and raise mm -hmm. the risk profile of our youth to, in the eyes of a predator. Offense instead of defense. You need a predator to look at a child online and go, that child is too risky for me to approach because that child's going to see through me. That child's going to call her father into the conversation. If the father's present, number mm -hmm. one problem in our society. Mm -hmm. Dads need to father, not be dads, mm -hmm. but be fathers, right? We actually had an incident with that in our family. Um, my husband, Tim's son, was on the computer and he was just playing video games, sure. right? Well, we heard him screaming back and forth because you know they all, they can talk during it's their virtual. video games they play, virtual. They play life, yeah. And we heard him just get really upset at this person. Um, and it ended up being... A, a man way older than what his son thought he was. And he didn't understand until we explained to him exactly what this person was doing to him. Yeah. And if we wouldn't have been right on top of that, that really could have been an issue right away. It happens so quick. It is in a moment. And, and people always say, well, look, if that happened to me, I'll tell somebody you will not. Mm -mm. If an individual knows what your greatest desire is and your greatest fear and today, I can build a dossier this thick on every child on the Internet because mm -hmm. they verbally, they vomit mm -hmm. their lifestyle, their concerns, their fears, their pain points. I haven't seen my dad in 10 months. Fantastic. Soft target. Oh, my God. I, I, you know, uh, I lost my peer group or the way she dresses, how she says to society, see mm -hmm. me, please. Mm -hmm. Right. And so for a predator, it's like it's sitting ducks today. I almost feel like they blackmail them, too, with any uh, no, information. A hundred percent. But but once once you get that child to volunteer action, now the hook is in. Mm -hmm. Now the manipulation. So it's force fraud coercion. Right. Mm -hmm. So so whatever that manipulation method is to the child is either threatening. In my sister's case, I will kill your mom. will kill your brother, your sister. We were raised by a single mom. So you've got a girl who doesn't have a father and all of a sudden now you're threatening to take her other parent away and the victim becomes a protector. Mm -hmm. How old was she when this 12. happened? 12, 13, mm -hmm. going in 12. And that's the average that's age in the U.S. The average age of children being exploited sexually in the U.S. is 12 and it's by design. Why 12? And 95% of victims are, are girls. Now, boys on the rise, 127% over 20 to 21. But why girls? Because you and every other woman in this building, right, went through puberty. Mm -hmm. And between 12 and 15, depending on your cycle, right, mm -hmm. you woke up one morning and didn't know yourself, didn't understand your body, didn't understand your hormones, couldn't talk to your father mm -hmm. about it. You started noticing boys. Mm -hmm. The most awkward stage of anyone's life You ever. noticed boys your age are, are, are idiots. <laughs> so you like older boys. Right. Now, now there's a 40-year-old guy that's just sitting online looking for that girl that is so creepy and it's so fast you know that over 62 percent of high school female girls today has sent nude pictures of themselves to a boyfriend 62 percent. i don't doubt it right so so who's the guy on the other end receiving it right and so once that exchange happens one time shame comes in regret comes in you know every single pedophile i've ever spoken to and worked with and every survivor I've ever spoken to would say the pedophiles told them it's your fault. You did this. You made me do this. I'm mm -hmm. a good guy. Mm -hmm. I've been able to control my urges until you came along and you posted that picture. You remember? Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden it's mind control and manipulation. And when actual sex comes in, it's over. 
because sex is sex is primal it's internal we're mm -hmm. all sexual beings so if a predator can tap into what i call your wiring system right they can turn the lights off right they can redirect power mm -hmm. this is how you see a woman be silent for 30 years after a single rape now what about the child that on average that's being sex trafficked is sold five to ten times per day and now most likely by a familial individual someone they know a Amen. family member a pastor a boy scout leader we saw what happened boy scouts of america U.S. Olympic swim coach, U.S. Olympic gymnastics coach. Right. It, these are trusted individuals. And what I want people to understand is a pedophile doesn't become a park ranger in the forest. They right. have to be in close proximity to children. Right. So they will work endlessly to get the, 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 the acceptance in the community, the credibility in the community, the trust in the community. The trust in the parents. A hundred percent. That is so scary. Yeah. How did your sister get out of the sex yeah, trafficking? It, it, that was a, I mean, she, she's a warrior. She'd have to be. Today, she's a mother of three. You know, she's pregnant with the third. I mean, that <laughs> it hardly ever happens. You see that kind of redemption. Right. God is good. Yes. He's sovereign. He can restore any life at any point. And that's the encouragement I want to want to give people is no matter what has happened to you, you can overcome it by 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 surrounding yourself with the right people. But she, Ilanka was literally rescued early wee hours of the morning by a, a undercover cop that was moonlighting at a casino to make extra income and and just heard this. She to Ilonka's story, and when you read her book, she'll say, I, she just got to a point where she said, if I die tonight, I die. Oh, man. But I'm going to fight, right? And, and, that, and that courage, yeah. that courage yeah. to stand up against your oppressor, in that case, real physical violence. Gives me goosebumps right? because that feeling that you get no matter when what happens. When you fight, mm -hmm. when you fight, right, the predator, w whether that's government, mm -hmm. Or a physical predator, what, they're cowards. They so are. what you do with a bully is you punch him in the mouth, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I'm not just saying physical violence, but you stand up for yourself. And in that moment, by God's design and the timing, mm -hmm. a cop walks past the door and, and, and really and dive into that book. It, it will share so much. But, but we see that throughout. You know, one, yeah. we, a boy we're helping at the moment, he's 12. He's addicted to porn at 12 because the average age of porn entry in the U.S. is age eight for boys. Wow. And country. that's just, inter I mean, it's easily accessible it's, on the it's, Internet. It's, and it's free. Now, we need to start mm -hmm. asking questions. Why is graphic porn free on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Why is it accessible when children have access? Mm -hmm. Where's YouTube on this? Where's Section 230 all of a sudden on this? Because we're worried about Dr. Seuss exactly. is what it is. We're going to cancel Dr. Seuss, but Zuckerberg and Dorsey, and I, I call these guys out. Oh, yeah, like, I do absolutely. too. They are So horrible. Zuckerberg and Dorsey can hide behind, you know, Section 230 where they're protected, but they can plead the fifth on the Senate floor and a floor of Congress when they pressed on child sexual exploitation, right. on streaming, uh, you know, transgender cross-dress hour, you know, story hour at, at Barnes & Noble, yeah. or walking last week, seven-year-old girls on a stage with strippers throwing money at seven-year-old girls, yeah. right? That mm -hmm. can stream on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're a publisher of Didn't content. one of those, uh, the transgender story hour guy just get arrested? Absolutely. But, for but where's, where's the accountability? Because today, social media is the tool of choice for the predator to engage in the conversation. So much easier. Big. Of course. The middleman is out of the way. The pimp is out of the way. It's a direct, you know, direct transaction. It's the pimp, now. actually. Social media is the pimp. Yeah. It wow. plays that role. It's the connector piece, right? So, so you have to ask yourself, where's the accountability? We can't have mm -hmm. a, a federal statute where an organization can hide, where it's 20 million child porn images removed plus, you know, Facebook alone. I mean, this happens. Mm -hmm. So if you know it happens, then you, where's the self-accountability to say, hey, we got to do something about this. Come on. Right. This is not, you know, and, and, and so, so society, unfortunately, uh, Shelly, though, I fight against the exploit, sexual exploitation of children, all right? Mm -hmm. There are many that's for it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're fighting battles in 13 states right now against mm -hmm. comprehensive sex ed, mm -hmm. where, where the governors of those states, Gavin Newsom, number one, mm -hmm. he was the first guy, signed into executive order, State Bill 145 and 2218, and these mm -hmm. insane bills where the State Department of Education didn't get an opportunity to vote on it. They call us. 
The California State Board of Education called us and said, can you help us? Because we didn't get to vote on this. It was mandated by executive order that every kid in, private, in, in public school mm -hmm. will be taught comprehensive sex ed in, from kindergarten and up. The people that believe in that actually think that they're being helpful when they do that by by addressing all of these issues, but it's not. But I do want to, yep. but we have to take a short break right now. I could talk to you for all day, actually, because you're making so much, it's Thank just you. common sense, well, what we need, what be. we're talking it about. But I wanna know all of the action that you're taking right. and what our studio audience or our audience can do to help themselves and their children as well. We'll sure. be right back with Yaku. The following are sponsors for today's show. If you'd like to become a sponsor, please visit us at CourageToStand.com. Amy Autry authors customized health insurance options. She's licensed and appointed with multiple health insurance and health share companies, so she can review all your health insurance needs, advise, enroll, and support you ongoing with your policy. Amy has over six years of experience as a health insurance broker to save you time and money in shopping and enrolling in a customized health plan that fits your needs and budget. Her services are free, so give her a call at 817-809-4409. That's Amy Autry at 817-809-4409. Looking to buy or sell real estate in North Texas? The Neal team with Better Homes and Gardens Winans specialize in residential and farm and ranch properties. Call our friends, Donnie and Darla at 903-744-5475 or email neal at winansbhg.com. Just one call, and as Donnie says, the pretty blonde and the ugly cowboy can put the power of two to work for you. Your journey starts here. Again, Donnie and Darla Neal at 903-744-5475. Jara Hutchins owns Clearing the Chamber, a female-owned firearms and self-defense training company that specializes in teaching women, youth, and families how to stay safe. We have a class for everything, including intro to handgun, time management for the gun owner, how to talk to your kids about firearms, license to carry, and how to protect what you're expecting, a class for new and expecting mothers. We have all five-star reviews on Facebook and respond quickly to your questions. Give us a call at 469-665-9333 or email clearingthechamber at gmail.com and schedule your free consultation. Again, that consultation is free. Just give us a call at 469-665-9333. Hi, welcome back to Courage to Stand. I'm here with Yaku, who is fighting the battle of his life, I think, and really saving lives all over 13 states and more. I want- All 50 states, but we're fighting battles. So, yeah, I mean, there's, 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 evil is very real. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, American children has become a trading card. And that's just a fact. And, and it's, and it's got to stop. It has to stop. So what we need to do is to get people proactive. We can sit here and talk about sure. this all day, but like, what, what are you going to do about yeah. it? Um, what are some things that you're doing? Yeah, so we are, as I said before, we're, we're in every aspect of the industry. We're connected with over 170 organizations in the U.S. that are in this fight in variances, whether it's a safe house or what's called victim services, mm -hmm. amazing organizations like Traffic 911 in Dallas, Samaritan Women in Baltimore. And we resource these organizations. But what we do is we, we fight. We, we go after D.C. We go after Hollywood. We go after the puppeteers, right? yes. those who mm -hmm. really control this because they are for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is why we're seeing, you know, over seven states at the moment trying to get a bill on the floor to lower the age of consent to 14. Mm -hmm. when, when statutory rape is 17, when the sex trafficking law in that state says 17 and under is a victim. So if they can't change the law to protect children, they write a new one that supersedes it and mm -hmm. circumvents it. Or the bill now in California that creates a 10-year you know, age gap to say if a 25 year old rapes, has sex non-consensual with a 16 year old, right? It's up to a judge to decide whether it was consensual or not. Number one, these cases don't make it into court. 
You don't see a sex no trafficking one hears case. A, no one hears no about way. this. A lot it of the things... It gets pled down to a drug mm -hmm. charge or a gun charge or a misdemeanor. And you know the media is not going to show that. No way. It's They're against complicit. their agenda. I'm mean, kidding. They're complicit. We have to call these people out by name. By name, call these people right. out. And I've noticed in Austin, not so much Washington, when you start putting these people and pinning them up against the wall, their name and they're on blast, they back down instantly. Like you said, they're bullies mm -hmm. and they're scared. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to. For instance, what can people do? This is what I ask Americans to do. Take your community back. Start on your street and actually start with yourself. When, when someone walks up to me and says, Yaku, I want to fight sex trafficking. My first question is this. Are you part of the problem? That puts people on their heels. How wow. dare you? I go, do you watch porn? Because if you watch porn, you are 100% part of the problem. You're you, funding. You're creating demand. Yes. For the exploitation of men and women. Well, y'all could just porn. It doesn't hurt anybody. It hurts everybody. That girl you're watching is coked out of her mind. She's under duress. She's probably put with that porn producer by her pimp because she didn't make enough money on the street. Or, or in the regular, you don't know. Why is 60% of women in legal brothels in Nevada asking to get out or has, has literal rape charges against, well, you can't mm -hmm. rape a prostitute. Of course you can. None we of decide, those women are saying, I hope on. I become this when I'm older. I want to be exploited. They're, stu they're stuck no. there no. and they need an out. There was abuse when they were young. Yeah. It's a belief system. And so what I ask people to do is take your community back. We need to take school boards back in this country. Oh, my goodness. So yes. you look at your zip code. You ask your neighbors. You ask everybody. You make sex trafficking a barbecue conversation Saturday. And if your friends don't want to have it, they're not friends. Right. Because you're having it to protect their children and your children. You say, hey, what are we going to do to take our community back? Don't you worry about Washington, D.C. I'll no. fight Washington, D.C. Yeah. Take your community back. I we have to get uncomfortable with this. Of course, um, of course. And I know, you know, there's a lot of people that um, want to say that you can't talk about. What, what are you saying? How are, what, how are you saying that? We have to get uncomfortable to tackle this issue. And we need to talk about it. And a lot of people, when our shows air, they're like... I didn't even know that was happening. True. Well, that's your True. problem. Yeah. You need to get involved then. Yeah, look, Ezekiel 33, right, says, Watchman on the wall needs to warn the community or the atrocities, and I'm paraphrasing, the blood will be on the hands of the watchman. Yep. I'm telling you today, there's 65 million babies aboard in this country. That blood is on the hands of the believer, those who do know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The children are being exploited now that you've heard it. Now you're a watchman. Right. Now it's on you. What are you now going to do? We will give you all the resources, all the training for your community. We will call out the local politician that's voting for child exploitation, mm -hmm. that's voting for a curriculum. You say people say the curriculum is good. Have, they've never read the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Talk about I your have curriculum. curriculum. You have a written curriculum to help people. So a lot of people want to stick their heads in the sand because they say they don't know how to do something. You're providing all of resources, that. yeah. So, so we're talk actually about that. writing 14 curriculums. We're in the process of writing 14 curriculums because many school boards, like Austin, comprehensive sex ed lost the battle in Texas thanks to Glenn Beck and us, and we fought. But Austin opted in. Of course. Austin said, "No, we're gonna we're gonna exploit our children." All right, Austin ISD. Some of the school board members said, "Well, if we don't teach this, then what do we teach?" Right. So, how about math? Yeah, exactly. Let's, <laughs> like, let's How about teach... leave sex up to the parents? <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. But I mean, it's like our, the United States is already behind on education anyway. We don't need to add more to it. Exactly. We're already behind. But So we are writing these curriculums, age appropriate, pre-K, kindergarten, all the way first through 12th grade. A, a, and it's about a healthy living and a lifestyle, a, cor a course, according in line with our, our, our faith and our beliefs and, and where we wow. are. To say, okay, teacher, if you're going to teach something, then rather you know, opt into this than comprehensive sex. And I, I must say this because people have to understand how deep evil runs. The comprehensive sex ed curriculum was written off of a worldwide manifesto for the sexuality of the world's children. That document was written by the World Health Organization. Mm. The World Health Our or favorite. The World Health <laughs> Organization wrote that manifesto with UNESCO, which is the United Nations, mm -hmm. with SICUS, which is the overarching government uh, uh, body for curriculum in the U.S., mm -hmm. and then they brought in a friend. All right, And that friend, to, to finalize the curriculum, was the International Planned Parenthood Foundation. Planned Parenthood. Okay. They took that curriculum to Africa. They exploited children in Africa, and then they looked for a single suitor in the U.S., one governor to say, I will sign this into executive order, right, in the middle of COVID, in the heart of COVID, when parents couldn't show up to protest and Gavin Newsom said, I'll be first. 
And he signed executive order, then ends the end, Washington followed, and then it swept like a tidal wave through this country. And I want to tell you that we're talking about a curriculum that teaches masturbation to kindergartners, that talks about masturbation. Instead of having sex, in the you should do this. Well, it's talking about experimentation because it's desensitization, right? So if you can have a child engage in a sexual conversation prematurely, you can move that child anywhere. And what is the predator saying? Thank you, Austin ISD. And yes, I'm calling them by name for grooming Austin children so that predators online can now go. With, so now a foreign man, a grown man, has a sexual conversation with a 10 year old. And to the 10 year old, it's normal because her teacher right. is having a sexual conversation. And they look at the teacher them. as a positive model or example. I would tell you, like, I mean, I'm not that old. And I know that if you would have said the word masturbation in front of me when I was 12, I would have cringed. I would have been so embarrassed, would have to leave the room because exactly. that's the way we were but raised. that's how you desensitize. And remember, you can't move culture without changing language. So what is happening in our country today? They're changing language. Oh, you can't, you, you can't call the syrup Aunt Jemima because that's racist. Mm -hmm. you, you can't have this because that, they're changing you language. You can't say he or she. No, it's like... Wait, what on, can we, on the what Congress, can we say? You can't say men and women on the Congress floor today. It's all to shift culture. And so right. you can't say prostitution. It's sex work. This, it's so subtle. And people buy into this. And they can't because they're aiding and abetting. Until it, something happens to them directly. Of course, and then they cry out for help. Right. Help us. Help us. Our child is missing. You know, We're, we're not talking about one and done. 75,000 minors in the state of Texas are being trafficked, are in the trafficking system per day. 75,000. This is And no, we just do our shopping and don't go Don't even around. talk about the border. These are American-born children, over half a million in the country, and we know 1% of the crimes reported, 1%. Now you talk open border policy and you let children flow into the border. It's insanity. And we're not even talking just about a political. We're talking about where is the true humanitarian mm -hmm. care for children? Because people say, Yaku, you know, they come across the border. They need a place to live. You don't know what you're talking about. That child is being sexually exploited on the way to the border. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about, because I like to call people out too, Yaku. Governor Abbott, this state is yours. Yes. And you can blame Biden or the administration all you want. That's right. But you were sworn to protect us and our state and our, our rights. And when those kids come over, they have rights too. And you are allowing sex trafficking to happen because you're turning your nose up to the horrific things that are happening on our border. So I'm calling on you, you personally, to do something. Yeah, look, we, 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 I've sat with Ken Paxton, who's fighting like crazy attorney general. I love Ken Paxton. Ken, Ken has literally, I can tell you things that we can't discuss here that's going on that is just, it's insane. Well, at least he's being active. No, he's fighting. He's suing. Ken, he's fighting like crazy. He has tried so hard. The second you go silent on this issue, the second you do it, you embolden the predator. Mm -hmm. You cannot. Give they will allow, They as much yeah. as you allow them, yeah. they will do. Oh, you give them a pinky, they'll take an arm. You have a book that's your, or a movie that your wife actually wrote, and it's based on true mm -hmm. life experiences. Yeah, the What's film, the name? The film's called Eight Days, number eight, mm -hmm. D-A-Y-S. By God's grace, that film's in 200 countries. It's become one of the number one training tools to show parents how trafficking happens. It's not a documentary. It's a that's feature what, film. That's what most people want to know. They how have does that to watch happen? It. They have to watch this film. It's on Netflix. It's all over, right? Watch Eight Days. And the proceeds, by the way, go into rescuing children and, and, and restoring lives. But watch this film. Watch it with your teenager. I'm not going to talk to my 14-year-old about sex. Their classmates, their teachers are talking to them about sex, for crying out loud. Somebody you, better talk to them you about You better them. bring truth back into the conversation. You have to. You know, we've adopted a feeling in this country today, that, a, a notion in this country today that love is a feeling. Now, this is what happens. The second love becomes a feeling. Now, if you don't make me feel good, you don't love me. But love corrects. Right. Unconditional love corrects. Correction is painful. That's scripture, right? Right. So now all of a sudden, if the guy online makes me feel better than my dad makes me feel I'm going to trust him and not mm -hmm. my dad. And it's, it's a this comfort is, situation a with them. That's a big problem. This is a huge problem. Now you sprinkle a little sex in there, a little shame in there, some group and peer pressure all of a sudden. You bring some Hollywood celebrities like Beyonce, you put her on a float 
nine months pregnant, naked, reenacting the sex goddess, and you tell every 12-year-old girl, this is how you get attention. And she well, goes Well, that's online. Michelle Obama, and, and she's the one that praises Beyonce. Um, I mean, we have a problem, people. There's a huge problem. And we could talk about this. Please go see Eight Days. Please, please go to our uh, site, Net Netflix. Share, sharetogethernow.org. Sharetogethernow.org. There they can learn how to protect their children, have this conversation at an educated level, real facts, real statistics. Mm. Go to your school's principal. You ask a simple question. Hey, Mr. So-and-so or Miss, Miss So-and-so. And yes, Mr. and Miss. Yes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. Are you, are you talking about sex trafficking in our school if the principal says no you got a problem that's number a problem one. or if they won't oh, no, if they won't even answer that's a bigger problem the, the, and then you need to engage and mm -hmm. then and then get this conversation in on the school board and and again i do not politicize this issue we don't profile is it a is it a conservative kid a christian kid a muslim who cares kid? i do not give a rip mm -hmm. i don't care if the school board is a hundred percent against my political beliefs if they're willing to fight to protect children we're in we're together. Yes. This is the issue. This is the greatest issue. It's the most bipartisan issue should be on the floor. Yet, you don't see a single politician in any debate, any question ever in any political debate, not in a single presidential election. Have you ever heard the question about how are we going to stem the tide of child sexual exploitation in our country? Mm -hmm. It's crickets. They're silent on it. Instead of Austin being worried about teaching them about masturbation, we need to put teaching them about sex trafficking and how they can get hooked into this world. A hundred percent. Until it goes wrong, like on some college campuses that I can't mention, where, where literally the dean of the college calls and says, come in now, sat all freshmen and, and juniors down and said, train all of them because campus rape is through the roof. We had an abduction on campus. What's going on? Let's not wait until a child in your community is or sexually- your child. Or, yeah, God forbid, right? We can't be reactionary to this. If you react to culture, you're late. Right. And we are late consistently on this issue. We have to get in front of this thing and say, hey, and, and can I, if I can talk to you, please, audience, yes. Dads, you're not your child's best friend. Step up and be a father. Right? And, and moms, honestly. But the moms too, but the moms fight. I'll tell you this the moms fight. I was raised by a single mom. If you ask me, can a woman, the answer is, yeah, she can. Mm -hmm. Can a man? I don't know. I don't know. They run away. Yeah. They run away. It's up to the emasculation of men in this country. It all goes hand in hand. Softening, softening men in this country. It's mm -hmm. all about creating a culture where we will not have guys left to fight mm -hmm. for the voiceless. And you not know what just the, the biggest child, thing people say to the me? homeless, the, the poor, <laughs> the hungry. Who's it, fighting for these people? The biggest thing, the, the most said thing to me is like, you have more cojones than any man I know. And I'm like, yeah, that's a that's, problem. Yeah, but that's not right. We, it's a problem. We, and so I'm, this is not a call out. This is me calling on fathers and men and calling them up. CEOs, walk into your boardroom. Do this for me. Walk into your boardroom and say, hey, guys, we're going to talk in this boardroom about child sex trafficking, right? And you watch how people react. What about you walk into your boardroom and say, listen, I just want to make you guys aware that porn will destroy your family. It will rob you from your marriage. And ultimately, you're feeding an industry. So can we agree that in our company... We're going to people that be people that build people. We're going to be people that, yes, sell a great product, make a lot of money, do all. But in the process, right, take our communities back. And, and then hear me say, not just take it back for conservatism or whatever. Yes, I'm an on-fire Jesus lover, Jesus freak, on-fire conservative. But children don't know better. Mm -hmm. They well, don't think Well, being a conservative means we love all children. We love all people. I, I, I don't have a choice. If I can't say I'm a Christian and then, and then go, I pick and choose who I love. Mm -hmm. I'm not the judge. Right. I can't condemn. I can't ostracize. I can't cancel culture, mm -hmm. okay? which is why we, we created a black, brand new social media platform. Oh, I'm so excited about this, yeah. you guys. Please tell us, um, because we've heard President Trump mention a tease on something, and all of us are like, where is it? But you have the inside scoop on this because it's yours. Yeah, well, a, a, an amazing team of people. I'm one of the co-founders, Dean Gray, Skylab, all these people. It's called Free Space. Free Space. And, and thankfully, we did not leak that to the press. Uh, but but free, free, free space was designed literally for all people. This is not mm -hmm. a come here if you're conservative. Mm -hmm. This is come here if you want to have a voice, if you want to use your First Amendment right in this country, if you want to use your religious freedom of whatever your relig religion right. is, come here to this place. Here you're protected. Here you're not marginalized. You're not canceled. You're not you're censored. Not, you're not censored. And there's a difference between hate speech and hated speech.
That's okay. correct. Right. It might hate hurt speech, my feelings. Hate but, speech is obvious. Yes. But hated, we can, where's the art to agree to disagree? Right. Where's the art of civil discourse? Now, at free space, you can literally decide what you see and what you don't see. We don't curate for you. You own your, your, your content. You own your data, right? We don't scrape your data. We don't sell your data. This is a place where you can come and build your business. And I've said it for too long. We've built our businesses on rented land. We've built it on these... On, on, on these corporations that can defund you, that can, you know, cancel you. Now we see, you know, debanking happening at the moment, mm -hmm. right? No more. Come to free space, right? When, when, are, when is it going to be available? It's up right now. You go to, it's up, it's live. You can download it right now, iOS or Android platform. It's free in the app store. And people ask, Yaku, what if they cancel you? Can't happen. We're on our own servers. We're on our own networks. Can't be canceled, but it's for everybody. And, and it's built on a thing called VRS, value reinforcement, where we say, hey, social media, the social dilemma said, look, we broke the world. We didn't mean to. We can use the very tools that they used to break to build. Well, okay. everything's a learning experience. Absolutely. Um, and we learned not to do that ever again. And if we can uh, cancel culture Facebook, that would be nice. Yeah, look, yeah, they have an alternative. I don't, we don't need to, I don't even need to talk about Facebook. We're just telling people, now you have an alternative. Right. Now you can come here and build your business You and, and you have all your features and it's end-to-end -end encrypted. It's standalone. Nobody's going to turn the lights off on you so and come have a voice, whether you believe what I believe or not. And you curate your content down to curating the news feeds, but we show you everything. No more of this, hey, you can only reach 4% of your, of your Facebook, you know, followers or, or it's curated for you. You have a private conversation with your husband about a car and the next day the ad pops up. That's really scary, right? actually. No more of that. You decide what it. you see, you curate and then, and, and you go do life and, and, you, and you go contribute to society. Can we put courage to stand on free space? Yes. <laughs> Then we might just have to do that. We're going to go uh, get into that uh, when we get home, actually, because I'm so excited about this. Thank you. you have been such a... I, seriously, I can talk to you, Yaku, for like a week. I appreciate you. You um, are so active and produ productive um, as far as you didn't like something, you're doing something about it. And that's what we really need everywhere, but mostly, you know, the, 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 Un the United States. We need people to be mad enough to get out and do something. And yeah. that's what I want them to see in you. Please share your um, internet site where they could find uh, yeah. your movie. Obviously, you can find us on Free Space Social. Uh, I am still on Instagram, and we use that site a hundred percent to combat sex trafficking. You know, nothing else. Mm -hmm. So that's Yaku.boyens. Eight Days is the film, and in our site, where you can learn is is ShareTogetherNow.org where I really want to educate people on how trafficking happens in their community, how they can give back, you know, and, and for them to fight. And, and I have to do this, you know, and it's not about my book. I've got a book coming out that's called It Starts With Women. And, and that's not, I'm not plugging the book, but I want to speak into your life if I can for a second. Sure. The reason I say women can is because historically it's been up to women to lead the charge and, and, and men really do have to step up and, I want to take you back to the moment where you made the decision, obviously, prayerfully with your husband and said, we're going to stay open. Mm -hmm. It okay? was. All right. And I mm -hmm. know I didn't even talk to you about it, but I knew it came yeah. from prayer because the courage had to come from somewhere and it's divine and it's a higher power, that kind of courage. I want to thank you. I want to tell you that you're an amazing warrior. We need women like you in our nation. We need women to step up today. The men will follow. The men will follow. But I want to tell all women, you want a strong husband. You want a strong boyfriend. You don't want a weak guy. You don't want to push over. And so thank you for showing women today that there is no glass ceiling, right? right? By God's divine order, you are limitless, right? And you showed women that they're limitless. And this whole notion of there's a glass ceiling, they're actually suppressing women. They're right. actually holding them back, right? And so black, white, Hispanic, I don't care, race, color, creed, mm -hmm. you are an amazing role model for, you. for, for young girls in this country. And I want moms to tell this story to their daughters. I want Thank moms you. to go and say, hey, let us, let us tell you about this, this, this Texan who stood up, you know, and, and was she the president? No, she owned a salon. <laughs> yeah. You can do all that with that. You can, you can do everything with what's in your hands. Whatever God put in your hands. So I want That's to right. honor you and just thank you for that. Thank No, thank you. And thank you for everything that you're doing. You say you're not a hero, but you are. <laughs> you're just humble about it. <laughs> 
Yaku has given us all the tools that we need to become proactive, especially with sex trafficking and raising our children upright. Um, please go to his website, go to Free Space. Let's all sign up for that today and share all of these experiences, share ways that we can help other people get the curriculum, get it out to your schools and be active about it, not just sit and talk about it. Thank you guys so much for watching Courage to Stand. I hope that you guys learned a lot from Yaku and um, I, I'm, just, I'm just a little bit floored right now by some of the things that we've gone over today, but I hope it moves you to wake up and activate yourself. Thank you so much.